Hello, hello. How are we doing, Mel? You fucking cooking? Uh, I don't know what you mean by cooking. Like, what do you mean by cooking? Cooking's just like you're doing great. Your fucking things are coming together. You're putting the pieces where they need to be. You told, we were talking briefly before we started recording here that you got dicked down. You got fucking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. dug out for the first time in a while. So you're probably fucking mm-hmm. on cloud nine. Oh, my God. Yeah, I literally feel so good because my pussy just had, like, those painful internal aches where it was like, if you don't put something in me now, I'm going to consume your insides out. And, like, I and my entire body would implode just from, like, my pussy seeking dick so intensely that it just looks for it somewhere else. And the closest way is through my internal organs just by, you know, sucking it like its own mouth. Um, I used to have a nightmare that someone would throw a starfish at my face and the starfish would like suck out all my organs through my mouth. And so my mind kind of automatically goes there whenever there's a hungry hole. Yeah. So like a face hugger type situation, like fucking the yeah, alien face thing. hugger. I'm just, well, it's, I guess it's sucking your organs out. It's not laying anything in there, but uh, <laughs> this guy's uh, uh, dick delivery that he gave you. Are we writing it? What do you think he gave you dick wise? Oh, um, I would say a 10, 10? actually. 10, 10 out of 10. 10. No, he was great. Is yeah, like us. Uh, is that because you were just so dick hungry that you were like, I, I, I fucking, uh, it's like when you're starving, you get a saltine cracker. You're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Or do you really think that this guy had the moves? Mm, I think that like his moves were good. I don't think that they were the best, most experienced moves, but I also kind of like that because i like the try hard desperation mm, vibe during sex yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. fucked up well it's um because you know once you have a lot of sex uh i feel like i've done so much of the like cool hot person sex who like knows what they're doing and is like super da 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 and now i really like um I-, I really like these these guys who are not super confident sexually but they're like trying really hard uh and because they're like overcompensating but i'm fucked up and i like that well because it shows that they're putting in effort they want um, you they want you to fucking and, have a good time yeah you, it's nice yeah, when someone the, is like really putting in the fucking work and i like you know amateur sex feels more real you know like when someone is too like say amateur when, when, sex like you're like oh you know normally i'm in the pro league i just decided to come <laughs> down to the minors for a bit give these guys a spin i'll go back up to the pros afterwards i mean like no i when i'm you know fully invested and i'm giving it my all i would consider myself in the pro leagues yeah. but i guess um you would only know that if you were you know fucking me so if anyone listening to the podcast is conventionally attractive uh and likes me already you should definitely say something in our voicemail which we'll talk about later but yeah no so to, but like yeah i think a huge element of it was me not having had sex in a while and both of us had not had sex for like the same amount of time um him for a different reason but me because i was like okay like i'm gonna see how long i can go without just having random empty casual sex because i'm in relationship seeking mode and i don't want to i don't know do that to myself but and i was like yeah maybe i can stay strong like maybe i can really do this um but i'm weak so olivia rodrigo in her recent album she has some i think it's in the song the grudge i'm not sure but uh, she talks about a breakup and one of her lines in the song is like, it takes strength to forgive, but I'm not feeling strong or something, yeah. uh, something like that. And I was just like, yeah, like it takes, it takes strength to not fuck. And I'm not feeling I'm not strong. Feeling I'm weak. Strong. I'm Gotta weak. Get that dick, dude. No, mm-hmm. I think you fucking give in to your indulgences, man. The others, uh, um, my buddy, I don't know. I don't know if he, I mean, we fucked it? for like four hours. Let's like, go. He, no, no, no. He, um, no. And, and the thing is like, I was so impressed because he like he didn't come until the very end until the end of the four hours he like Mm. literally held it for four hours um and we were just kind of everywhere and we were both like very desperately hungry and i was also super into the fact that he was like um like he was super nervous Mm -hmm. uh because i don't know sometimes that like i don't really get nervous in those situations because i'm like yeah pussy hole like like i know like i i know that it's gonna be fun yeah. for me because like i think when you're comfortable sexually and you kind of know what you like then uh yeah I, I don't know i i just like i think i figured out the comfortable with my body and comfortable with myself sexually a really long time ago like much more what well, much uh sooner than i than i gained personal confidence like confidence in any other area yeah. What about you? How was the sex you had this weekend since you're always fucking? Uh, no, I don't think I fucked this weekend. I'm on a pretty, I'm on a kind of a pussy cleanse right now. So wow. I broke I broke a personal rule that I had, which was 
don't fuck in New York. Like, just like mm. I, I live in New York, fuck mm-hmm. on the road. Don't fuck mm-hmm. in New York. You're on the road every other weekend. That's enough. But no, I, like full separation of like what uh, you're doing and that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because then when I'm at home, I can focus on getting work and stuff done and I know pussy won't get in the way. But mm-hmm. I broke that rule and then I started going on hinge. I was running a, a show in New York for a little bit that I stopped because I was just too busy on the road. Um, I'm surprised you're not on Raya. Uh, okay. I'll tell you the whole Raya story after this. Um, okay. So... Uh, I, so then I ended up going on a few dates, sleeping with a few people. And now exactly what I thought was going to happen is happening, which is now I got a bunch of people on my phone being like, yo, were you around? What's up? Let's hang out. But, 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 and my fucking low, uh, self control is giving mm-hmm. in and I'm doing less work and I want to get the work done. I can't be always mm-hmm. fucking the pussy. I got to get, mm-hmm. so I got to like cleanse it off. I'm going to be visiting home soon. I'm going to be going back to uh, Vancouver, Canada, where the whole nice. fam is. And I have like a whole log of like of ladies there that I go back and I Oh wait, bang. for the holidays or just in general? Just in general. This is gonna be uh this is just gonna be just an in general visit just to see the fam. Um mm-hmm. but I have like my And to fuck the literal homegirls. Fuck the homegirls. And these aren't even chicks. Like literal homegirls or home guys or home homeboy. I don't I don't fucking know, dude. What Th- these aren't even like girls from like like old squeezes from like when I was in high school or something like that. No, these Did are you like call them squeezes? Squeeze, yeah. You know, you get a little squeeze that, that that sticks around. Sometimes I speak like a 1930s gangster. It gets in there. Wait a second. Do people say... Sque- I've never heard squeeze used in that context. Squeeze? Yeah, your old squeeze? Yeah, squeeze. That's like... If you watch like an old, like, timey gangster movie, they're like, meh, see? Like that kind of stuff? Like that's oh, a... Oh, oh, okay. That's, meh, a, meh. that's like a, a squeeze is like... That's an expression for sure. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, so the, these are just like ladies that have like come through over time and because I always go I back mean, to I mean, I just Vancouver. call it a warm-blooded dildo. Warm-blooded dildo is great, dude. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to refer to it. But yeah, yeah. warm blooded sentient dildo. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm dildo with a consciousness. I'm not fucking. I am I'm saving it for when I go back to Vancouver. Uh, when I go back to Vancouver, I'll fuck a bunch and then I'll go mm-hmm. on the road and then I'll fuck potentially fuck on the road. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the have Raya you heard thing, my song "Fucking Busy, Busy Fucking"? No. Oh yes, I have. Of course, yeah, I've heard. Uh, yeah, I mean, busy. it's just uh, that's what it is like we were talking about the kim petra slut pop album earlier um and about how i'm addicted to it Mm -hmm. and how i've listened to like i every single day i just inject it into my veins as if it's the oxygen all my organs need to Mm -hmm. keep going and you were like yeah what's that one that's like throat go and i'm like i know what it is it's like um but my i mean my favorite one is treat me like a slut yeah dirty bitch i like to fuck like literally i've been listening to that shit on a loop and i was also like i was because i was getting into character right because i was like oh my god i'm gonna have sex for the first time in fucking forever and i was like okay i'm gonna like really really yeah, like, like i was already hyped to get like i was listening to slut pop album and i was like yeah uh and apparently he's also really into the slut pop album like before we fucked i was like i'm i'm mentally pre-gaming with this album and he was just like oh my god like Kim Petras is my spirit animal. But sorry, what were you saying? No, the, I get that thing you're talking about being like um, needing to get in the zone. There was, I, mm-hmm. the, I, oh, this was probably like a month ago. I went on like a tear and I was like fucking. And then each time I fucked, I was like, you know, my heart isn't really in it right now. Like, you went I, on a tear. I'm learning so many words right now. I feel like, are you just saying random words? A so tear? that I'm like, what's the. No, a tear, I mean, yeah, I think we're. Maybe that's more Canadian. That's definitely not old timey gangster, but like a tear is like. You don't even, Tara doesn't even really need to be referred to in like a sexual connotation, but going on a tear just means like you're ripping shit up. You're out there Mm -hmm. causing mayhem. Like going on a tear, it could be drinking, it could be partying, it could be fucking, you could go on a tear at work and just like getting a bunch of shit Mm -hmm. done. Like you, you could use going on a tear and however you you want to use it i guess in the terms of having sex with women it could be misconstrued into ripping up pussy but uh mm. I'm more... so i guess my version of that would be like instead of whack-a-mole i'm doing like absorbamole absorbamole yeah. absorbamole and spit it back out i don't yeah. know like what's i'm trying to think of what the i mean tear makes sense but i'm trying to think of what my what do you think the girl equivalent of that is of going on a tear i mean going on a tear isn't gender specific it's like it's just a it's a work where i'm on a tear i'm on a tear is like it it doesn't it 
it doesn't mean pussy. It just means I'm out there just ripping shit up. Anyone can rip shit up. You can be like, I'm fucking crushing 10 beers tonight and then I'm fucking going to hit a line and then I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I'm on a tear right now. Or like I'm on a bender. Like it's like, Mm -hmm. it can be a synonymous with going fucking hard in any direction towards anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I still want to come up with a version of it that's like I'm absorbing something because I feel like tearing is a different action because I'm trying to figure out how to say that I was reading this hentai earlier this week that was like, oh my God, this is this this is a fantasy I've had played out, but in an extreme form where basically um, it's a harem harem style where mm. it's like a it's like a man girl and like sh- and there are like a bunch of hot dudes that she likes who also want to fuck her, and uh, basically they get put in this like you know inevitable situation where they have to uh, and anyway what ends up happening is like um, so all the dudes are like yeah I want to compete for her sexual love so um she's sort of like okay i guess you can go first and like they're all like watching it happen and then this uh, and so like this one guy starts like fucking her from the back uh and it's awesome and then the and then another dude gets jealous and he was like no wait like i'm not gonna let you steal the spotlight and then the guy is like well what are you gonna do my dick's already in her and he was like well i'll just put my dick in her too and then and he was like no you don't want to do that we don't want our dicks to touch and he was like well thankfully i'm bi and i don't care about that and then so he so he puts his dick in her also and then it's like the both of them fucking with their shafts touching and then and then, then like pussy? the rest a uh, pussy okay yeah, and then um, the rest of the guys like kind of all eventually join in, and then so she's just like she's doing the splits in like the center, and there's just like a ring of dudes like all who all have all the their dicks. dick in her at the same yeah. time, and and it's just insane conversation where it's like oh my god, like you know I don't know what I'm touching, you know like and like you know one of the guys was just like I don't think my dick is even touching the pussy walls, I think it's just in between, I think it's just in the center of all the dicks, just like crazy, and I was just like wow, this is actually totally my fantasy, like I fantasized about this for a very long time, like. You know, when I was a child, I was like, okay, like, I want all these anime characters and, like, these real life people, and then they're all gonna go in at the same time, and it's gonna be great. It's like someone's braiding a rope. That's what it was like. Just, all these dicks, <laughs> yeah, just I'm going on a braid. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on a braid. Dude, braiding some cock? Dude, let mm-hmm. me braid your dick. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess. Wait, that. so you're going. Wait, wait, what's the Raya story? Oh, the you're Raya. Not Raya. Like, I'm, I'm not very Raya. surprised. Basically, long story short, I'm not on Raya. I applied to get on Raya. They said no. Um, That's or, well, shocking. I don't even know what they said. No, I think I just didn't hear anything back. And so I'm like, mm. I don't know. So maybe I'll try again. I don't know. Um, but mm. something weird was my buddy is dating this girl and he was like, oh, my, where were they? Like when they were first, first seeing each other, I guess she saw a picture of us and she's like, oh, you know, Che. And he's like, oh, he's one of my best friends. She's like, mm-hmm. oh, I messaged him on Raya. I was talking to him on Raya. Oh. And I was like, I'm not on fucking Raya. So maybe she misremembered. And it wasn't me or it was maybe she messaged me on a different app and I don't remember. It was like Hinge and not Raya. Or, or, or someone has stolen your identity someone and is pretending to be you on Raya. Someone is impersonating me on mm-hmm. Raya. That is a possibility that someone is. No, I've seen so many, like I've gotten sent so many screenshots of people being like, this person's impersonating you on da da da. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm like, what I mean, you? that like, I mean, that's going to affect them, not me. <laughs> like, I'm like, whatever. Like, what do you want? What do you want me to do about this? It's like, I can't. Yeah. And also me. there's so much like deep faking shit nowadays that it's like yeah it's like dude if you're if someone is being me on Raya I just hope that they're fucking doing a good job out there and I don't know what they do oh my do god when somebody recognized one of your fans recognized me uh, this weekend at a food festival nice what kind of food were you eating at this food festival Sorry, uh, it was called Family was... Fest uh no, no no it was really cool so um like UTA invited me it was like this cool kind of it was just called Family Fest. It was like this cool music festival food thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was really funny because I was like, okay, I'm going to bring uh, my white best friend. And we and it's funny because we go in, of course, like she's the only white person there. And I actually thrive in those situations. Like I love bringing a white best friend to like an to, like an all non-white event because uh, cause it's just funny. I'm just sort of like, yeah, like now you know what it's like. Okay, so it was, mm-hmm. it was all Asian food? No, it was all um, like just not white food oh. uh it was it was mostly um yeah so i would say it was like primarily like yeah just the mix of like you know asian Latin, i don't know like literally every cuisine except for, for white. white cuisine yeah whites aren't like i actually know i was about to say what are the whites cooking up but i'm like i forgot italian they're whipping that shit up big time yeah just like shit like or you know just like potatoes or whatever they were trying to get during the famine or something yeah. i don't know um but but yeah so like this guy uh, I was in line for, 
Oh, I was in line for this Japanese pizza. It was like yaki. Yeah, it was like this yakiniku yakuniku pizza, which is like, if I remember correctly, Japanese appetizers, but on top of pizza. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, like um, I don't know, teriyaki beef plus like the corn cheese that you get, like the you know what I'm talking about the the Korean yeah, yeah. corn cheese. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's so good. I'm addicted to that shit. Um, but this guy he comes up to me and he was just like, hey, like, um, are you on a podcast or something? And I was like. Yeah, uh, be, be, and I was like, wh- how do you? And he was like, oh, like so, uh, my friend uh, Carter Cruz, like she was like, you should listen to this podcast. And then I listened to it. And I'm like, wait, Che, I know Che. Uh, and he was like, yeah, like I've seen some of Che's content. And then through that, he found me. And Sick. I was like, whoa, this is the first time somebody has recognized me, you know, from the podcast in mm-hmm. real life. But also like through like just from the podcast because normally it's like oh i know you from tiktok and on instagram blah, 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 now you have a po-. but uh but it was cool i was like whoa like this person just recognized me just straight from the podcast dude blowing up getting the fucking getting the numbers up getting the people in the fans dude mm-hmm. that's fucking good news good shit also good fucking japanese pizza that's ripping right now i've been fucking so mm-hmm. clean on the eating dog i've been eating like eggs fucking greens fucking like or my organic beef that i get i like just Mm -hmm. lean as shit i'm i'm think i'm fucking down five pounds right now i'm trying to get back down to 180 that's my goal is back down to 180 when i moved to new york i fucking packed on some weight i put i got Mm -hmm. up to like 210 so i want to get back down to 180 be lean fucking get back into like that crazy fuck shape uh that's a yeah that's it that's it in terms of well i think you're all i mean um I think you're already in crazy fuck shape. You know? I'm doing all right out here. I'm doing all right. I'm body streets, positive. You know, mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. Out, are out here throwing the dick around. I've never feel like the the people leave disappointed or misleading mm-hmm. as to what they're. Well, in general, I've had to. way better sex with guys who aren't muscular, who have like softer bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, I like you know when a guy is super shredded, it just kind of feels like uh, this is from my experience from when I don't know, like two years ago when I was like first blowing up a bunch of like pro athletes slid into my dms and i was like oh i haven't done that before i mean i don't think i would really like it very much given what i assume the sex would be like Uh, and i was right but i'm glad that i did it Mm -hmm. well no because it was just like a like mechanical like um, this is how you i I was like there's no like passion you're just follow you're just like there is no passion there is no aggression there is no vision in this fucking football team (laughs) there's that kind of shit was going on yeah no yeah i just was like (laughs) Uh, this is too mechanical and like they and like to be honest i was like you guys are too jacked like i just felt like it was this i felt like i was being fucked by a refrigerator or something <laughs> like <laughs> no literally i was just like oh my god i just feel like this large rectangle hard t- like being fucked by like a table or like a closet door or something and yeah. i was like yeah okay i understand that you're you know conventionally attractive or and that you like won the super bowl or whatever um i don't care about the super bowl or whatever well i mean like i don't care about that shit i mean i mean i'm not a sports person yes it's impressive yeah it's impressive okay no no i i I agree with the whole like i don't really care about your accolades in terms of what you're bringing to the table like in terms of like whether or not we're gonna fuck i agree with you on that point but like you winning the super bowl like because i did and i don't even the thing is i don't even remember this guy's name because i don't care about that stuff um and it was at the same time where i was like fucking a bunch of similar people so I just they just all kind of blurred together into one mm-hmm. giant refrigerator in my mind. Yeah. Um, and fuck, where was I even going with it? <laughs> just, yeah, just shit. Uh, yeah, just shitting on the athletes I've had sex with. But um, no, no, no. Oh, oh, softer bodies. Yeah, I've had mm. definitely the best sex with guys who don't have abs. Because mm. to be honest, like having a shredded torso, like it feels hard against my body. Honestly, I'm just like eh, this feels so like hard. I want it to be more squishy and like comfortable and i kind of feel like um like i don't know it kind of feels nice to be totally suffocated by like a giant squishy dude (laughs) i've never banged one of those like super ripped muscle mommy chicks um oh i I thought you're gonna say i've never banged one like one of those nfl dudes (laughs) yeah no i've never fucked an nfl dude it was like who knows who knows what the future holds but yeah those like muscle mommy girls i want to let's not get that wrong if you're a muscle mommy listening to this pod you're fucking my uh, you're on my radar um but uh my buddy did he said he was hooking up with this girl who's like a professional bodybuilder and he said that she hell yeah flexed her pussy on his dick and he's like he felt like she could rip it off that's crazy yeah she could fucking 
rip his fucking dick clean off, which is fucking oh crazy. God. Um, should we get back to ranking these drugs? I can't remember where we left off last time. Oh and, my god, like, yes, actually. I actually I remember where we left off. Um, <laughs> I remember, but yeah, so I remember last time. I was like, okay, cool. Is that all of them? And you were like, no, we haven't even co- covered like opioids, weed, caffeine, narcotics, opioids. weed. Yeah, yeah. Um, the- oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about weed. Yeah, we didn't talk about weed, I think. And weed yeah. could have its own episode. I mean, like, let's get into weed. Let's get into weed, dude. No, let's get yeah. into weed, dog. Um, Remind me, does um, weed amplify your sexual experience? Like, does it make it better or more intense for you? Because it does for me by, like, 10x. Uh, sometimes it depends. Like weed and me have a very like tenuous relationship. We don't have a very. What does good, tenuous mean? I can't read. Uh, it means like it, it, on the rocks, toxic. Like it could. Oh, like precarious. Yeah, yeah. Like could okay. break at any moment. We don't. We don't really like each other that much. It's oh my god, like, that's how I feel when I see someone who's like really skinny, and I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna break. I'm afraid. Of, I'm afraid <laughs> for them. <laughs> So think I'm afraid about, for, I'm like, oh my God, I'm afraid for you. Think about that. Think of, think of that kind of energy. Like if there's a tension there. Um, mm. And uh, yeah. Oh, wait, because I remember you said you get paranoid. I get bad paranoia. Um, mm. It depends on how high I get, but it's very easy for me to get too high. I have a pretty low tolerance and I've been disgustingly high several times. Oh, Several is mm-hmm. too many. I think about three times I've been so high where I thought I was like going insane and I could hear people's thoughts and like deleted a bunch of shit off my Instagram and like had a full Oh my God, like, that's so funny. Out. I think you actually, um, I actually think you texted me during one of those because <laughs> I, I remember no 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 i because I, I i remember um yeah I, I remember you were going on like a whole cleanse where you're like cleaning up all your content and i remember getting messages from you like super late at night at like 5 a.m being like yo dude i just um cleaned up one of our posts from two years ago just trying to do a clean and i was like yeah yeah, and the thing is, I totally knew what you were going through because I think everybody who does this, and especially as a social media platform, has gone through that, like, oh my fucking God, I'm paranoid of everyone. I don't know, like, who's real in my life and who's not. And I'm, like, so, and I'm paranoid about, like, all this sh- And then you, like, think, oh, fuck, like, am I going to, th- is my past content going to screw me over now? Oh, shit, my past content doesn't represent me. Now I need to go back and clean everything. Everything's a good representation. Like, I just, yeah, it I It's like an everything sucks. This all sucks. This is garbage. I hate all this stuff. It's not good. And I just like deleted a bunch of it. And like I've had just that kind of weird back and forth with the paranoia with weed for a long time. If I mm-hmm. am in like a good spot mentally, I will like maybe smoke and fuck and stuff. I, if I'm smoking by myself and I don't get too high, I'm usually really good. And I really like to smoke and go to the movies, being in the dark and having that form mm. of stimulation to focus on. Like, man, I got fucking ripped with a buddy and we watched uh, Blade Runner uh, 2048 mm-hmm. or 2049 or whatever the fuck it's mm-hmm. called. One of them. One of them. And, and man, that movie fucking rips when you're high. That one is a fucking great movie to get high to. Um, mm-hmm. Any of that, I don't know what his name is. Something Villeneuve, I think it is. He's the He directed I Dune don't know as well. any. Like, I've not seen most shows and most movies, and I don't know who most celebrities are. So, mm-hmm. it, and it's just funny because so many people like, in the industry or whatever, they're like, they're always, they always do the thing. It's like, have you seen this show? No, uh, it's with this person and this person. It's directed by this person. And they're always saying it as if I'm going to know like who those people are. Mm-hmm. And cause they're just so like jaded into it. And they're like, you don't know. Who yeah. Don't know. Del- don't know. Dennis, Dennis or Denny Villanova. Dennis Rodman. No, the, the director of fucking, uh, Dune, uh, Dune and, Blade Oh, I don't Rodman. know. Yeah. No, that he just, they just wrote. Dennis Rodman didn't like, direct that. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, uh, but what's your relationship with weed? How are you saying you're using it? You're banging. Oh my God. No. So, uh, I have like a, pretty much 100% positive relationship with weed. Hearing Mm -hmm. weed, hearing you uh, talk about weed is kind of like how I feel about shrooms, where Mm -hmm. shrooms just makes me really fucking paranoid of that, like, I just get paranoid that, like, I'm fucking up and doing something wrong and that, like, everyone hates me even though no one's paying attention. I just get into my, like, tip, into, like, my old, like, you know, self- hating habits and i'm like oh, fuck. and then i just can't and then um especially if i'm with people then it just becomes this cycle of like fuck am i fucking uh, you know just like the paranoia like anxiety cycle where you're like oh fuck i, I know exactly have. what you're but, talking about um yeah no 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 but um with weed i remember we talked about this in like one of our first episodes or something and so now i can really get into it um yeah no weed is just like a super positive experience for me overall um like sexually especially it 
it makes everything t- feel 10 times better and it literally makes my orgasms 10 times stronger like everything sexually is better for me with weed like whether it's with someone whether i'm masturbating um even if i'm just like getting horny like reading something um like just like just you know the whole the whole nine yards or i guess i don't know how i sometimes i'm just like they should make a pussy ruler or whatever i mean they probably do have that at the doctor because i want to know like how deep it gets in there but i guess like i could ask for a guy no i don't want to i don't want a guy not to do that but anyway so do i know how deep yeah your no pussy i just is? feel like what sorry you want to know how deep your pussy is yeah, well, because I, I just, I just, because I just right now I was like, oh, the oh, the old nine yards oh, or the the whole nine oh, yards. Okay, okay, but then okay, I was okay. like, oh, maybe I could say the whole nine, <laughs> I don't know, pussy inches or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could find that. Yeah, out but quick. I yeah, mean, but like, you so could, it's like okay, no, if I'm masturbating sober. I'm just Wait, I'm sorry. sorry. I said we, I said we could find that out pretty quick. But then I was like, no, I think that's a you job. Like I, I'm not going to be there for when you d- and measure the depth of your pussy. Like yeah, but I'm going to be there for your first ketamine booth. Oh, yeah. You'll be there for the first ketamine booth. But mm-hmm. I don't want to be like a sailor trying to find out how many uh, fathoms your pussy is fucking sending a fucking rope down there. <laughs> well, okay. So if if I'm like, so if I'm just, you know, nutting sober, like, yeah, it's still a nut. Like, yeah. Great. It's a nut. But, be upset but no, but like once you've tasted, you know, the extreme super saiyan nut that you can get with weed. Um, and yeah, it doesn't matter like what kind, as long as it's just weed in mm-hmm. general. Like, okay, if a regular nut is um, like a little, what's smaller than an earthquake? Uh, like a tremor? Yes. Okay. So if a normal orgasm for me, like sober is... Um, a little world tremor, then mm-hmm. nutting on weed for me is like a deadly earthquake. I, I I thought that this analogy would be more relatable. I tested it on threads and it flopped, but I was like, yeah, like what this once upon a time, I nutted so hard that I caused the greatest earthquake in the world. Have you ever heard of the great Chilean? Uh, and thinking that that would be more common knowledge. I mean, it wasn't for me. Like, I, because I didn't know what people's earthquake knowledge was. And I was like, hey, I have lower earthquake knowledge than normal. So I'll just Google it. I'm like, hey, what's the biggest earthquake ever? Mm -hmm. And then it was like the Great Chilean in the 1500s. I'm like, yeah, people will for sure know this. And then I posted it and I was like, no. Um, But I did post one last night that uh, got a little bit of attention where I talked (laughs) about how one of my ex-boyfriends lost, I think in like the first six months or year of us dating, he lost like 10 pounds of stomach fat just from us fucking. Nice. You because he didn't his... like work. No, like he didn't like work out or, or do anything like like the only exercise he would ever get was when we were fucking and he lost like 10 pounds and everyone was like, what are you doing? And he, he was, was like, like, I'm just fucking, fucking giving it, dude. I'm just giving yeah. it my all. That's all I'm doing out here. Dude. Wait, so what drugs for you amplify that? Oh, I think last time you said coke and alcohol, but it's yeah. kind of. Coke, booze. but like it's also complicated because yeah, like dick coke, stuff. Yeah, it, it might fuck your dick up and shit. I I do agree with the weed making you nut harder because I've jerked off on weed and had crazy nuts, mm-hmm. but I've never really put in the effort to smoke, get high, and then fuck because there's all like I get so in my head when I'm high, so then the whole interaction of like fucking the person, I find it hard to um to be present and just to mm-hmm. like be in the moment because I'm mm-hmm. so fucking cerebral when I'm high. So I mm-hmm. think if I, if I locked on a person who was fucking pretty consistently. And yeah, so you see like, your face is in between her thighs, but your mind is still at the office. Oh dude, my mind is in like so many different pots, man. Like I'm thinking mm-hmm. about, yeah, like what, what I should be doing in the office. Like, did I post my content? What content should I make? Like, how am I going to make it? Like the, like fucking, Oh dude, so many things are going off. But if I got, so when was who, the last time you had like a, like a memorably super powerful nut that out, you know, that outperformed your, your regular nuts. Like when's the last time you had a super Saiyan nut compared to the, to the other ones. Okay. I think this was when I was in Berlin. I think it was, I don't know if for sure it was, it might've been when I got back, but I had one day in Berlin, 
um, where I was really hungover and I was like, I'm not doing anything. I know I'm in Berlin and I c- could go out. There was even this big parade, this sex parade going on. There was mm-hmm. a bunch of naked people. And I was like, I'm not going. I'm going to have a recovery day because I just partied super hard last night. So I just laid in bed, ate all day. And I had like a good fucking long wank where I was like fucking watching videos, pulling on my dick, relaxing, pulling on my dick, like mm-hmm. not coming probably for at least an hour and a half. And when oh I. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Because cause sometimes. Uh, okay. So a, a thread of mine that did do well was masturbating either takes five minutes or two hours. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, no, because like it's so easy to get distracted. Yeah. And and well, and I just, I like the in and out. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. Also, there was a girl in Berlin who we hooked up. And so like she came over, we're making out, we're like doing everything but kind of. And she's like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to sleep with you until we go out for dinner. So we like, I just, I was like, all right, that's that. That totally works for me. But we're still Mm -hmm. fooling around. We're fooling around, fooling around, Mm -hmm. fooling around, fooling around. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then we go to sleep in the morning, same thing and fooling around, fooling around, fooling around, fooling around and being like, she's like, I don't, and she, we're doing like fucking just the tip, all the fucking things. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, uh, she was like, no, I like, she was even like, like penetration edging. Yeah. She was like grabbing my dick and like, like, okay, just put it there for like a bit. Just like, just like that. Like it, it wasn't me being like, yo, I mean, of course I wanted to bang, but she was mm-hmm. also fucking putting it on the edge. And we did this. So we did it all the whole night before. And so we probably did it like a couple hours night before and then like three hours in the morning of like fooling around and all this shit. Mm-hmm. I, we went into the shower after and I was like, I had somewhere to be and I was like, I have to come or I'm going to be in crazy pain. So we're like mm-hmm. making out in the shower and I just jerk off. I swear to God, my jizz shot out of my dick. It hit the fucking glass of the shower. It <laughs> sounded like the jet on when you take the nozzle on the hose and change it to jet. Yeah. Like it was like like fucking hit the wall (laughs) or in the glass like it was that that nut was fucking crazy oh yeah because there's so much um investment oh so much investment so much yeah yeah yeah. i mean you're like holding out for like it's uh you know denying short-term gratification for a long-term reward Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no like pent-up shit is great i mean i just i mean yeah i mean i literally got um i got the shit fucked out of me for four hours like two days ago or something and it was just and it was and the thing is both of us were so like pent up like i think so much of what made it great was we were both so feral yeah like yeah like i was uh because you know our mutual friend who introduced us i haven't texted her back yet but she was like oh my god how was it and i was in the middle of texting her um yeah he fucks like a someone who like someone who recently escaped prison from guantanamo bay (laughs) and he was told you know, by Satan himself that, you know, if you don't fuck this girl until one of you passes out, then you will not only get sent back to the torture camp, but everybody in your life will also die. So like, no, he had that kind of like there was desperation. There was, and I was like, was so, in so into that, you know, um, f- for whatever reason, sometimes I'm into when a guy is not super sexually active or experienced or or whatever and then and this is like you know the first time they're doing it in a while and they're just like trying so hard and and i don't know i just like the effort i, I think it's so hot yeah no that's fucking great dude they're just getting like when you 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 roll into those people every now and again uh there's i remember i hooked up this one chick in mexico and she was someone who we would see each other at the same bar all the time the one that i would just go to and we always like glance at each other she was just someone i always found attractive but i never talked to her and it was always like passing like you feel a vibe but you're just not really doing anything about mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. then i go to the bar once and it's like her going away party she's leaving and moving to back to wherever because there was it, i lived in a tourist town there's people from all over and mm-hmm. i was like oh i gotta talk to her now i was like when i'm gonna talk to her and like immediately hit it off immediately we go like we're we have a couple drinks and then we end up back at like my apartment or her hotel or something and we fuck like animals dude like mm-hmm. just fucking like it, 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 i we just there we could feel it the whole time and never acted on it. and then when we did it was mm-hmm. like hot as fuck and then mm-hmm. she was gone just fucking disappeared out of my life don't know her name don't know anything uh, yeah yeah it was uh it oh was those good. are great like when you have a really good travel fuck because yeah. those can be sort of i mean 
I think it's easier for a girl. I mean, it's more likely for a girl to not have the most amazing time. You know, uh, it's e- I think just with a stranger, you never really know. I mean, like one of the reasons why I hadn't fucked in so long. I mean, so long by by my standards mm. uh, was just because I can kind of only really fuck if I kind of like the person a little bit mm-hmm. these days. I think. You know, before I was just like, yeah, like, and they're hot, whatever. Like, he did some cool, th- yeah, I don't care. Uh. And now I'm like, uh, I need to actually like you mm-hmm. to fuck you. You know, I think I used to be better at, or I, or I have to hate you. Like, I have to feel something <laughs> strongly <laughs> towards you because, um, oh my God. So I'm, um, yeah, me and my friend Brad Scumbag Dad, we're writing a song right now that, uh, like, he, I, I thought of the song and well, we both wrote it together and it's called Stand Back, I'm Gonna Jerk Off. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's about like hating your ex, but they're still hot. And like, and so it goes, you're such a jerk, but I'll still jerk off to you. Stand back, I'm gonna jerk off. Stand back, I'm gonna jerk off. I'm really gonna do it right now. I'm really gonna do it right now. Like, and, and cause I, cause you know, he, during a, dinner we were playing one of those games where you write down your funny answer to something i don't know it wasn't apples apples it was like one of those and his answer for everyone uh brad's was stand back i'm gonna jerk off Mm -hmm. like what like what would you say in this situation stand back i'm gonna jerk off like what's the situation what's something you could say to both your grandma and the pizza delivery guy stand back i'm gonna jerk off and i was like that's so great i wonder and then so i was thinking about that and then later that night i was like that I feel like that could be the hook of a song, stand back, I'm going to jerk off. But then how would we, how do we get there? And then, so I was like, oh, you're such a jerk, but I'll still jerk off to you because that's actually how I feel, you know, jerking off to my past toxic situationships where I like fucking hate the person. Right. Um, but the hatred, you know, before, during and after was what fueled, fueled so much of it, you know, in my weakest moments, like, I would never do this, but I sometimes am like, oh man, um, I would never reach out to them. However, but if we were in an enclosed space and it was like, you know, if someone could create a situation, do you ever imagine a situation for yourself where it's like, wow, I really want to fuck this person, but like you wouldn't be able to for, for some reason. And, uh, because that, I don't know, like you don't know that, or, but like, I always imagine a situation. I used to do this, uh, when like I, I had crushes on my old coworkers and stuff where, and I knew I couldn't fuck them where I, I would just like during work, I would just get super, I would like imagine these situations during meetings where I'm like, damn, it would be so crazy if like, if, if like everybody left this meeting except for me and that guy. And then suddenly there was a fire emergency and like the door closed and the entire office started like burning down and it was just us two. And then it was like, well, I guess, you know, if we're going to die, we should f-. like, I just think about well. that shit, you know? Yeah, no, no. I get that whole like horny scenario. Just think like that horny fantasy about someone who you're not fucking 100%. 100%. Yeah. What's a horny fantasy you played out recently or that you, uh, that you want to play out but haven't yet or that you haven't done in a while mm, horny fantasy uh i've been just kind of going the backlog a lot i've been thinking about i'm going back home so it's a thing but thinking about the people who i'm gonna fuck back home and then also the, mm-hmm. the ladies in toronto i have like a pretty good like there's a couple chicks in toronto who i'm like i can't wait to fuck again and mm-hmm. so i've been dipping into those those have been like really good ones but i'm I'm trying to think of like specific fantasies of someone I'm not fucking that I would be like, ooh, you would be great to fuck. Oh, there's, oh, I can't talk about this one. Uh, cause That's okay. I'm, yeah, if they... But can you like kind of, can you give anything? Yeah, okay, I can give, I can't give context as to who they are. It's well, yeah, not of course not. really bad. Yeah, look, hey guys, here's the Instagram of the person that, that yeah. I fucked yesterday. No, of course no, not, no, okay. It's not bad, it's just like they're, I guess, technically a coworker. Um, but, uh, like the, there's this one person, every time I see them, they're like so sweet. I don't know if they just treat me like this. Or they treat everyone like this. They like hug me and they like touch their cheek to my cheek and it, they fucking get me worked up. Mm-hmm. Every time I see them, they get me fucking like, I'm like, do you just like the way they talk in this really low tone as well? And like, mm-hmm. like this really, like, I'm like, I, 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 if fuck, I'm like, are you fucking with me? I want to be like, are you fucking with me right now? Like, who, <laughs> no one fucking goes up and gives someone like a warm, nice, tight hug and like touches their cheek to your cheek. Like, every time I leave, every time I've been around her, I'm just like, whew, I'm just always like fucking like horned up, dude. But yeah, I jerked off to her the other day. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, like, then it, you don't have a lot of hugs like that? 
No. I feel like that's a typical hug. No, okay. A typical hug with like someone who you see now and again is like, maybe you get a fucking ass out wraparound. Maybe you get a one hand over. The, you're not getting a fucking like hold you close to my fucking bosom. Like you're coming in tight and where our faces are touching. You're not getting a cheek on cheek. That's like, like your hot body against mine, skin on skin. Get the fuck out of here. That's not a normal hug. That is not a normal hug. Yeah. Are you hugging I mean, I people like you. this? You're hugging uh, I mean, straight I mean, men I do t- that are I just... I mean, I hug guys like, who I want to fuck, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm like, that's um, why I was To, like, like send f- a signal, you know? I mean, like, I... I mean, I do that on purpose to guys I want to fuck. Like, if I don't want to fuck them, I'm not, like, doing that shit. I'm just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, like... That's why uh, I was like, like, make, it, make it fast. I, I think I think that's why I was like, is this are you fucking? Because you're fucking getting me riled up. This chick, dude. The low like, tone is so real. Like the low tone of talking. I think especially for people who are high energy like us. Um, yeah. I was there was this one guy who I was just so into just because of his voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it was so like it was distracting me from how stupid he was. Like it, it was crazy because normally, um, well, no, no, no. <laughs> like like normally, if it's like, oh man, they're a fucking idiot. Then I'm like, uh, but then his voice was so nice. like, like, yeah, we were talking. Um, I mean, yeah, like, and, and just, I don't know, just like half of my brain was like, uh, he's so dumb. But then the other half was like, oh my God, this, like, he's talking this like low, like calming, like really sexy, like, um, and, and like, I know that he, and I know, I knew that he wasn't being genuine because he was just saying like, all the right things or whatever mm-hmm. uh like, like i feel like it's very I, I feel like it's you know you can tell when a guy is just s- saying the right things on purpose but they don't actually feel that way mm-hmm. like i like i know people are not as dumb as actually no i'm pretty dumb i take that back <laughs> nope everybody's dumb yep that's where i'm going with that um along the lines of what we've been talking about I want to get into some of the drugs that are like yeah 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 no I keep get, we keep getting oh, distracted no, think, by like I, oh yes yeah, I think this is great we're on we're on a great we're on a great kick right now um, but I want where's your what's your relationship with caffeine caffeine I feel like it we never really talked about in the realm of all the other drugs but it's clearly a drug is one of the most used oh yeah drugs. yeah um, I mean like the most pop I think the most popular drugs are in like America or whatever are actually the worst ones uh you know alcohol caffeine and nicotine Sugar, I'm like those yeah, are the, yeah. the to me those are like the worst least fun ones um I hate caffeine actually really? cuz it what makes me um I mean in like in an emergency I'll drink it but I hate the feeling you know like I really mm. hate because I get so like I'm already very naturally energetic when I you know when I have energy but uh it just makes me so fucking anxious and jittery Mm -hmm. and i just don't like the i just don't like the feeling i'm like fuck i'm so uncomfortable and uh and like i'll do it right before i need to work out or something yeah uh i I, like actually it makes me feel so bad that it forces me to work out harder are you doing like uh are you doing fucking what's it called just like a cup of coffee um yeah i mostly just do coffee i mean coffee is my pre-workout yeah that's right i think that works because it affects me so strongly and also it makes me so uncomfortable that I'm like, I have to work out this uncomfortable feeling. Mm-hmm. So I'll do it in like a self-hating, like get this feeling out of me way. But what about yeah. you? Uh, I do like caffeine. I like caffeine quite a bit. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I've been drinking it more just recently because I think I got a better relationship with it and I know what time of day I can drink it when still get a really good night's sleep. I was a big tea drinker mm. for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. So I go what kind of tea? green tea. Green tea is my go to. That's like green tea's got good caffeine levels. I like the taste. It's got a bunch of health benefits. It's also, like, theanine. What's theanine? Uh, so it's this. I don't fucking know. It's like L theanine or whatever. Basically, green tea has it and coffee doesn't, but it balances out the. I might be just saying the wrong thing, but from to the best of my knowledge, uh, it balances out the jitteriness of the caffeine. So mm. you get the. Um, and I, it actually does work. So I do have a thing of L-theanine, just like the powder. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, it, it fucking works. Like, at least for 
me. It just helps but, Oh, I actually, fuck. Okay. I've been big on the Huberman pod right now. You, you're familiar with Andrew Huberman? He's doing. Mm, I don't know his, anybody. He's doing is a health podcast. I've been listening to like, I've been getting back into my trying to get the fucking body centered and all that shit. So he, yeah, I think he was get all your chakras that. aligned. I have my chakras fucking all cooking, but I think he was talking about L-theanine and how they put it in some energy drinks for that exact reason, because it helps mm. bring you down and make sure you don't get too fucking amped up. Um, it actually like um yeah like i don't even know if i would call it bringing you down i almost i just think it's something that counteracts a specific symptom Mm -hmm. so i would actually say i mean my personal experience is like i still like i just drink coffee flat i'll have the same level of awakeness still when i add the l-theanine but the l-theanine just literally cancels out the jitters Mm -hmm. i um I, I don't usually get too jittery. I know how much coffee I should be drinking. I think there's a good balance of where I get to, like, not just awake, but get this, like, focus and get fucking, like, I get from where I'm sitting normally, which is just, like, a good mental space, and I feel like I can get stuff done, to, like, the hyperactiveness. Uh, and I want to be in that state when I'm writing jokes because that's where I feel mm. like I'm most funny, most giddy, most goofy. Um, Mm -hmm. and so if I like to have a cup of coffee before I write, cause I get into this very silly, goofy state where I'm laughing and having a good time. Mm -hmm. And I like to Mm -hmm. harness that specifically for the writing Mm -hmm. outside of that. I'm not an energy drink guy. I don't like the high that you get off of energy drinks. I don't like, I just, I feel like alert, but like confused. Like I feel so coffee, do you, or, or caffeine? Is this just like a solo thing? Like you only do it when you're in that state or do you do it socially or like what are the Uh, other uses? I, yeah, I'll have like a cup of coffee like before, like b- at the beginning of the day, sometimes if I feel like I need it, but I'm not going to like, if it's late at night, if you know, sometimes you have like dinner at a friend's house, or you're out for dinner with people and they go like, oh, a cup of coffee to like close the night. Someone's like, oh, I have like an Irish coffee or whatever. And then put up a shot of Bailey's in it or whatever. Or you just have a cup of coffee to wrap up. I will never do that because I will not go to sleep. I'm not, I mm-hmm. don't have a super great tolerance when it comes to caffeine, but what about I do sex like it. on, ca- like, how do you? Tell me more about the relationship between coffee and sex for you. I mean, I don't think coffee really makes me hornier, but mm. it could. I've never really experimented with it, to be honest. Um, Does it impact your performance at all, like no, positively or negatively? I don't, think, I don't think it really has. Like, I think maybe if I was feeling... Or maybe like, not performance, even like the feeling. Oh, yeah, you just said it doesn't make you hornier. Like, I think if it made me like jittery, made me like fucking... Because sometimes if you do have too much, you will get that jittery feeling. I think if I had that, it would oh, be Oh, I get the jittery feeling every sex. single time I drink it. <laughs> Oh yeah. So like it's, it, I think it's the form in which you drink it into. If I have it through tea and I don't have it through, um, uh, coffee, I won't feel the jitteriness, but sometimes I like to have it through coffee. Cause I like that peak, that fucking sharp mm. up. Cause it gets me in that headspace where I can write more. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. nicotine, where are you, where are you hitting on that? I hate nicotine. Really? I really like, okay. yeah, I think it's just, uh, I feel like it makes me feel bad. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah, that's fair. That's, that's, yeah, that like literally like a accurate description. Yeah, I'm like, I, I think that by the time I had even tried a cigarette for the first time, I had already done all the really fun drugs uh, because um, I think Coke and nicotine were the last drugs that I tried because I just got super in. I was like, oh, psychedelics. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Weed. Awesome. Uh, Molly. Awesome. And then I was just into that shit. And then by the time I tried, you know, Coke and nicotine, I was like, this is so mid compared to all the shit that all I've already experienced. Been on, yeah. yeah and, and it just, I was like, oh, this makes me feel like shit in comparison. You know, what about you? Uh, I think uh, nicotine is a, a very sparse relationship with. I had a really bad relationship with one of my first exposure. I was 10, and my parents let me smoke a Cuban cigar while we were in Cuba, and I got oh so God. fucking sick. I didn't puke, but I felt like horrible. I remember I was so sick. The next day, we were flying out of Cuba. Oh, right. Canadians yeah. could, could go to Cuba yeah, we back could go to then. Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, we're I went illegally in. like uh, in 20... How'd you get uh, in? Uh, uh, okay, so this is a longer story, um, but basically it was in that in-between period. I think it was, I want to say it was 2015, 2016, I think it was 2016-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like that period where like it was it was like the half ban. Was, mm-hmm. Like basically if you were an American, you could go, but only for 
professional reasons. Like you had okay. to like have family or you had to be like working there. It wasn't, you couldn't go for tourism. You had to have like a reason. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know that, uh, I got, this is such a long, I'm trying to figure out what, okay, so I got banned by Venmo uh, mm-hmm. for this whole thing because I was like, okay, cool. Like we'll fly to Cuba and then we'll just do it you know, that way uh, there was like a whole government like affidavit thing where at the time, uh, whatever company I was working with, I just I just like forged a letter like saying that I needed to work there. Uh, and uh, on like the little government application or whatever, I was like, yeah, I'm going there for research purposes. I just I just really forced it. Mm-hmm. You know, I just forced some like weird story. And I was like, wow, like this could be really bad. Because I could not only, because like two bad things happened. I was like, oh, I could like totally lose my job or just get in trouble with my job. And I could also get in trouble in this way. But I was also um, undiagnosed bipolar and on and like in this like manic state for forever. So I wasn't really thinking about that. Um, and I was also making these decisions like drunk because I was let's go to Cuba. And then finally, okay, so yes, yeah, so we buy the tickets. And then uh, I went with one of my ex-boyfriends and, uh, and we're like, cool, we're going to go as research. And I, I made this whole thing where I was like, okay, like I'm going to be the researcher and you're going to be my intern. Like I just created this like whole fucking scenario with like all this paperwork and shit because I really wanted to go. And then uh, so I sent him a Venmo like payment because he bought the tickets uh, through this like, I don't know, th- this like official thing. And then Venmo freezes my payment because they see the word Cuba in it. Uh, and I didn't think that that would be a trigger word because I was like, people eat Cuban food, you know, yeah. like why would the word Cuba? And then uh, but because it was the word Cuba, I guess, um, Venmo froze my payment and they were like or no they just like they just froze my account and i get this email from them being like hey uh this was sus we need to do like a two week inspection on you like Damn. like the government needs to do like a two and i was like okay um and so i was like wow this is so stressful but then they ended up you know i ended up passing whatever tests they had for me like right before the trip so i ended up working out and i was like great and then we get to cuba and then uh we're staying at one of those Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. It's like not a hostel. It's like something else. And um, oh, Casa Familiar, maybe. Anyway, uh, and then there were like a bunch of Americans there. And I was like, wait, how did you guys get here? And then they were like, I was like, did you guys do all that crazy paperwork shit? And they were like, no, dude, we just you just fly through Mexico and they don't stamp your passport. Everyone knows that. And I was like, cool. (laughs) I did not I did not Cool. So, okay, great. Because like I literally I thought I was going to be so cool. You know, I was like, yeah like no one else is doing that like i'm gonna be <laughs> and then you know you go and, and then i'm like not only do i find out that i'm not unique or cool but also that i did a bunch of unnecessary work to do it the hard way but it was still it was still great still i had, I had a great Cuba. and yeah i had a great cuban experience oh shit we have a voicemail we got voicemail guys so we got a voicemail writing in of course guys if you want to send us a voicemail you can go to say hi dot chat slash tyca pod Pod, you yes. can leave us a voicemail there and we've had a few voicemails come through so keep on send them in uh hit us with the voicemail today okay go production team go from michael coming in what's up michael we're about to listen to your i'm assuming you live in la i live in oc modern day romeo juliet minus all the death um i cook i make a mean cheesecake I'm great with kids. Animals love me. I have a great job. I'm out of sick days, but I would still call out and take you on a great date. Um, I'm six one, and I'm it's Friday night, so I may or may not be high right now. Wow, dude, Michael, talking, coming in. Okay, this is a, a pitch at you to get you a boyfriend. What's your first impressions? I want full on. Let's Mel give it to me. I'm not gonna have any input until after. Oh, I mean, I want to go on a date with this guy. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, he basically was like here in under 60 seconds. He efficiently communicated all of the reasons that it would be good to go on a date with him. And I was like, yeah, I like all those things. Uh, Because like, because like, well, one, he put in the effort to like even do the thing, Mm -hmm. you know, like and I'm like, cool. And you kind of really only know about this if you were listening to the pot. You know, it's not like. It's still, you know, small and growing. So you would kind of only know. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I'm going to assume that he already likes me. So I'm like, okay, cool. So you like kind of know. I don't have to like, you don't have to like learn about me to know that you, you fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like, yeah, like, I don't know. I Like, I was like, oh, that's really nice. Like, I want to like take you on a, you know, because I think in, especially in this industry, you just meet so many like, I don't know, like weird ego dudes who are not gentlemen or who don't like want to 
Uh, he seemed, he, I was like, Michael, you seem very nice, and uh, I would love to get dinner with you. Dude, great. That's a great first impression. I think my biggest takeaway was makes a mean cheesecake. I like that a lot. I think that's a great mm-hmm. quality. Big fan of cheesecake. I've talked about how much I like cheesecake that I've had people bring me homemade cheesecakes to shows. So that is fucking sick. Uh, my my qualm, he sounded like he had a very wet mouth. His mouth was very... <laughs> A lot of, I don't know if it was the microphone. I don't know if there was maybe a tap running in the background. Seems like it's a wet mouth. What's that about? Why is your mouth so so much saliva, so much juice in there? That's my only thing <laughs> that, when I was listening to that. Everything else, mm-hmm. good with animals, good with kids, uh, cooks, fucking 6'1". That's great. That's great. Man. That's a great height. And it's great also height. not too tall because I think mm-hmm. six, um, yeah, 6'3 is where it come it gets like a little bit too tall for me where mm-hmm. it's like okay i feel like i'm doing this, this is very athletic yeah i think and like all the stretching it's like not fitting um and no like the and the fact that he was like oh like i'm out of sick days but but i'll, co- I'll, I'll put in the work i'll i'll find a way to I come love hang that. out i'm That's like great. oh my god you're gonna like put in the work like okay, okay. um uh, yeah i think okay, I michael think, i think michael could get a shot what do you okay what would you say is the next step for michael michael sent in this uh this pitch he wants to be, or he wants to at least try out to be your man. Um, what do you, what, what's the next step for Michael? He's got to shoot you a message on Instagram. How's how's Michael going to get a hold of you outside of this? Uh, sending you a message through our uh, say hi dot chat slash tyca hmm. pod. Okay, so my number and social security number are now. Uh, mm. mm, that's a great question. I think I, I probably have to because I do want to get in touch with this person, but also not um, because I feel like if I'm like, oh yeah, sign my DMs and a bunch of dudes named Michael. Mm. would just uh, because i've been in that situation before where it's like oh i'm that person i'm that person where where like this one time on my story i was like hey if your name is so and so we met at this thing like so like because i was thought they were cute and then of course like a bajillion people were like yeah it was me yeah how's he gonna prove that he is in fact michael um oh oh okay okay oh they should dm the podcast instagram and then uh the and then basically the podcast like uh you know the podcast instagram people can can vet it yeah can, i can, think can that's a great it. idea that's that's yeah brilliant. because i also have my dms off on instagram just for, really um well, i guess it's different for girls yeah 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 like i think yeah. that it, it depends on how like, because it can be very distracting you oh, know when i try to and i'm like fuck dude i'm always- yeah it's no and the thing is like i i like i don't have self-control right i want to fucking see what's in there and also and so i just was like if this is too distracting um and a lot of times it's just gross yeah, you know yeah, yeah. um and like yeah, there's there are basically there's a higher proportion of unsavory messages than messages that I that you enjoy. Like. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, but Michael, uh, you should DM the podcast Instagram, and we'll go from there. That sounds great, and I believe that is our pod, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, guys, if you want more content from myself or Melissa, you can find me. Or I guess we'll do the pod first. You can find more of the podcast uh, uh, on Instagram at Thank You Come Again Pod. You can find us on YouTube at Thank You Come Again Pod. Uh, you can rate and review the podcast. Please give us five stars on Spotify, Please. Apple Podcasts, all, or whatever type of podcast app you use. Stitcher is no longer with us, but I'm sure there's other ones out there. Um, and and the uh, the link in my bio on any social platform, whether it's uh, Twitter, Threads, Instagram, or or or, or TikTok or whatever goes directly to the podcast app on your phone. Like I think originally we had this link tree thing that would that would show you two links, like one to the YouTube and then one that would take you to the audio one. But I was like, that's so many steps for people. Uh, and so basically, if you click the link in any of my social media bios, uh, which I'll get into after Che does his like Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I'm touring in all these cities. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like just send me a list. I'll make a little song for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. And, and uh, anyway, but but the the link it's like a it'll take you directly to whatever podcast app is on your phone like straight to the thing it's not gonna that they made it so that it works like that yeah 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 it, it'll take you exactly to where you gotta go uh mel where can they find you they can find me at sailor mel 69420 on everything on tiktok on instagram uh yeah those are like my main ones and then youtube is melissa on 69420 i don't know you'll just just find me like if you really if you really want to you you can you, you will you'll put um but more importantly find me on spotify i'm sailor mel on spotify uh and stream my new songs i have three new songs out right now um one is called 
I'm never eating cheese again. And it's like a whatever. That's what it's called. Uh, the second one is called Drink It, Smoke It, Snort It, Shoot It Festival Remix. And so that's uh, like a Speed House song. That's a remix of my other Drink It, Smoke It, Snort It, Shoot It song. And then one came out today, actually. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, it's called um, Don't Kill Yourself, Suicide is Cringe. So the song is actually inspired by uh, the song that me and Brad had made three years ago called Don't Kill Yourself, You're Too Sexy. The one that um, got, you know semi-traction online but more importantly a billboard in Times Square yeah. and then we were like we should make an updated version of this because that one is just saying don't kill yourself you're too sexy and not a lot of people or, I mean um, a lot of people are like well I'm not sexy so uh. like they can't believe that even if it's no 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 that's the feedback I got they were like well I'm not sexy so uh. and I was like Jesus um, so then I was like cool well if you're not going to take the positive then why don't we why don't we give you some shame to avoid huh yeah. um, so it's called so um, yeah while I pull it up Che where are you uh going on tour next on tour or performing next. you can catch me in uh bridgeport connecticut i'll also be in uh, new something new brunswick new jersey and of course the big big show at the beginning of 2024 is going to be live at the wilbur in the wilbur. boston uh those are the big ones coming up so if you want to find me for any shows uh, you can find all those tickets at chaterena.com wait that's so funny i feel like every time you're talking about your tour days it just kind of sounds like you're auctioning off names for cities yeah who wants just to buy like, this, this one but uh Louisiana okay so quick. purchase again yeah hit us with your yeah. song <laughs> okay quick so before before you end this is just the quick sneak peek of the song it's also only it's also 69 seconds long so if you don't listen to it like Love you, it. Uh, whatever okay so here we go and this is by me and scumbag dad but it's under sailor mel Time will do it for you. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Don't kill yourself. You'll die anyway. Just wait. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> You'll die anyway. Just wait. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Nothing's worse than cringe. Nothing. Suicide is cringe. Cringe. Cringe is worse than death. Death. Okay, so that's all you get. Um, that's a pre. That's a pre nut. Listen to the rest of it on Spotify. Boom. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Come again. Bye. See you next time. Bye. We want to hear from you. So leave us a voice message at sayhi.chat slash T-Y-C-A pod. Again, that's sayhi.chat at T-Y-C-A pod. And make sure that your message is one minute or less. You can ask us a question, share what you think is cringe, tell us a story, whatever you like. And if you do, we may play it right here on the pod. We're going to leave the link for you right below.